Okay, to continue with um, John Tatlow's memoirs in as they relate to Dr. Morton's life, um, John Tatlow, just to review, was the father of Charlotte Tatlow, who married Charles Carr Morton. They were the parents of 14 children, <clears throat> many of which uh, died of that issue and um, some tragic deaths, but the important thing is, is that Dr. Edward uh, Morton, <laughs> Charles Kerr Morton's son, uh, went to Canada and had a very large family there, and uh, one, even beyond that, one of his sons went to Australia and had a very large family there. So this is pretty much most of the people that are interested in, in Dr. Charles Morton will be from these lines unless uh, you descend from uh, Charles Morton's daughter Elizabeth Morton through the um, Freeman family or the um, <laughs> let me look because I forgot Freeman family or the um, Danzy family I should start with the Danzy family Barnaby or the Freeman families. Okay, let's get back to what I was doing. Okay, so this is now we're going to get into. Now I'm going to get into a part <clears throat> of his uh, narrative that touches upon his the, the subject of Charles Kerr. <clears throat> and I want to be very um, careful about uh, this whole situation. And I guess before I get into it, I'm just going to graphically in a picture. Um, show the situation as it relates to um, Charles Carmore, and I'm going to use my genealogy program to do it. Okay, so let's just go over here. Let's just start. And, um, I have it under unknown, unknown. Okay, so here's Charles Kermorton. I have a birthday of 1774, but no one really knows when he was born. I may get a clue as to what that is if I'm ever able to find his gravestone record, and uh, there is a family record uh, around here that I got from Bruce Howard that um, says that he died on this date in 1819, but it doesn't provide a birth date. <coughs> okay, I've assumed it's England. Okay, so let's just try to figure out when could Charles Kerr have been born. First parameter is he was married in 1799. Okay, so if you really want to argue uh, ra date ranges and things, I mean, <clears throat> and also you got to consider that after 1799, they proceeded at that point to have 14 children almost absolutely in succession, one after the other, starting in 1800 all the way down to 1816, with uh, Darcy Morton being the, the youngest one born. And then Charles Kerr died in 1819. Okay. Buried at St. George's and St. Thomas's in Dublin, according to Pierce Morton's journal. Now, usually older men aren't going to have that many children in succession year after year after year. It could happen, but it's probably not going to happen. But if we want to get a rough idea as to how old this person is, we're really starting from a place where we're saying, hey, he's probably about 18 years old um, <clears throat> at youngest in 1799, and he's probably at oldest 25. Uh, this is a span, a uh, marriage span of 17 years, so that would be taking 25 plus 17 would be 42, supposedly when his last child was born, I'm just coming up with ranges. The only way I could really come up with a birthday is by doing ranges, right? <clears throat> From different things. How does it scale against all the different factors over here? So, in general, we can say he was anywhere by having a marriage date 1799, algebraically, we can say he's probably anywhere from 18 to 25. And so that takes us back to about uh, 1779 uh, at earliest uh, plus two, 1781, and uh, latest would be about uh, 1775, really. Okay, now we also have uh, contents of this journal where it's going to say, oh yeah, we also have that little note that Eliza wrote about um, 
Charles Kerr is what he's going to end up doing, uh, not to be in the guards. Okay, and that one was written, if I can find my notes quickly enough, I should, should have had it in front of me. Of course, I never planned anything. Um, this letter here was written in 1778. 1778 or 1779 these are notes written from Liza Pratt saying quote <coughs> uh, Dr. Morton intends putting him into Mr. Angelo's to ride and fence but he's not to go in the guards and so that could mean in 1779 he was anywhere from 16 to 18 years old so that lends a little less credence and <coughs> kind of points to the direction that Charles Kerr was actually older than what I was first assuming and so that could put him that other parameter has him born just within reasonable ranges anywhere from 1761 to 63 if, if we think he was 16 to 18 years old when they were trying to starting to talk about what his career was going to be but if he was just 6 to 8 and they were talking really ahead of time it could have been 17 71 to you know 1773 of a range right um okay so now let's see what 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 uh how what other factors john tatlow throws into the mix with his accounts he says thus we did spend the happy days a mill calling party then ensued and i returned to london and found dr morton in the museum and he went in the evening to hacking college now, just to pause there, I don't know what Hacking College is. I still don't. You know, I thought I found, might have found what the college is. And um, <clears throat> even if I'm able to find out what the college is, um, I would have to um, still wouldn't know if I'd be able to find out whether they have records of who the students were back that far and whether what they were calling this student, by the way. Went to Hacking College to see... Charles Kerr there, a student who the doctor calls his ward, but who is in fact his natural son and was at that time intended to be his sole heir. Okay, let's stop here. Uh, slow down there. I'm not going to stop the video. Let's slow down. Um, <clears throat> now, this is an outright statement by Charles Tatlow. He's saying Charles Kerr is his natural son. I, he's just, he's asserting. That's an assertion he's making. Later on, he's going to bring up some more evidence that really, to my mind, raise some doubts, but let's get back here to Charles Kerr's birthdays. Okay, so here he is getting married in 1799. Now we have a parameter in 1788 that he's a student. You know, he couldn't be over 20 at that time, so that, you know, but probably close. That kind of brings him in, you know, he really was, we're looking at early 1770s now, and he put all these things together. This he would have been, you know, if it's 1774, it would have been about 25 maybe close to 30, right? So, you know, he was he was definitely older than um, Charlotte Tatlow by a good, oh, eight years, which is more unusual than not, roughly. You know, we think he was born around 17, 1770, maybe late 1760s, but, you know, certainly not any, um, <clears throat> you know, unless he was a boy genius, he wouldn't have been any would have been later in 1779. He would have been only 10 years old, or 1778. So um, this actually would make him about 14. This is a little bit too early. You know, 1770 is probably about right. Yeah. Okay. So um, that make him about 30 when he got married there. Um, so it kind of it kind of goes against my other set of thoughts there, but those weren't so strong as to be cut in stone versus <clears throat> being a student somewhere, we kind of get the idea of how old the person is. Now, this is all he said right there and at, at that point, but that's not the end of what he, what um, Charles Chalice says. But let's think about what he says here. Dr. Morton is saying that Dr. Morton himself, and, and Chalice is telling us that Dr. Morton himself, in contradiction to what he's asserting here, has said that Charles Carr is his ward or adopted son or someone he's taken care of. Okay. Um, 
now now the burden is, lies on you know, why would why would Dr. Morton lie about that? Let's just think about that. Would, why would he lie about it to to his business manager? Well, there could be other. You, you could think of some things or reasons why it may may be. Now let's look at this analytically. Let's go back here. Let's look at Charles, the father, right? So this unknown, unknown. Since it's unknown, I don't have a date for it. Let's just start off at the beginning with Mary Berkeley. Okay, so in 1716 he was born. By 1736, was it? Yes, September 18, 1736, he was admitted to uh, the University of Leiden. Okay, and then at that point, um, let me get some things out of the way. I want to be able to see that I'm actually getting this stuff. Okay, that's coming out pretty good actually. Okay, so um, he at that point is at 1736, and he's around 20 there. He, he goes to college, and then eight years later, he's getting married to Mary Berkeley. And he remains married to Mary Berkeley, if Collins' peerage is right, until 1755. If the Oxford Dictionary of Biology is right, uh, which I doubt, it would be uh, probably 1768 that he was married to Mary Berkeley for. There's no room there for any other spouse to come into the picture. We have, But we have Elizabeth Morton and... I was told by Jill Gray, now I recollect, his son Lionel that, that ended up dying in 1750, and Mary Berkeley dying shortly thereafter, and only two children between Dr. Morton and Mary Berkeley. These both taking place at Kendall. I haven't yet to find a birth record for this Lionel, but I, I very, I'm very confident about Jill's, Jill's work. Okay. Mary Berkeley dies in 1755. Now remember, Charles Kerr is going to college in 1788. You know, we give him a rough. We can just give him a rough age, just just to be generous. We'll call him 20. That would still be 1768. Okay. So Mary Berkeley's gone, and let's see what happens. Now we got Mary Pratt that comes around in 1767. But Mary Pratt at that point is, as you recall, uh, or Lady Savile, she was 61 years old in 1767. Her first marriage took place December 19, 1722, when Charles Morton was six years old. So <clears throat> her childbearing years are probably all over with. Okay, so um, that that's that. Now Elizabeth Pratt was living there with them, but he didn't marry Elizabeth Pratt until 1791. And then we can see over here, Charles Kerr, eight years later, is getting married, and he has his first daughter. And you can see. But unless unless Elizabeth Pratt was the mother, we don't have an explanation as to who the mother was, if indeed Charles Morton was the natural father of Charles Kerr. But we do have Dr. Morton saying that Charles Kerr was his ward. That seems to make sense. Actually, even though Charles uh, John Tatlow is telling us that he's he thinks Dr. Morton's lying, and he thinks for a fact that Charles Kerr is Dr. Morton's natural son. Um, the other pieces of evidence that we have actually co refute or contradict what he's saying here. And so it really does make more sense to me in my mind that, that this Charles Kerr was adopted. Now, you, one can always hope, and I, you know, I'm not going to throw out the possibility out the window and spoil everything that everybody thinks they have solved here. And it could be this a piece of information that I just don't know that makes this look deceptively like a closed case. But DNA is going to help sort this out. If um, <coughs> my boss Jack has gets a DNA test and it matches up with all the other Mortons, not just the ones that are in Canada that descend from Charles Kerr, but other ones, then we know that he probably was the son of Charles Morton, assuming Charles Morton, in fact, wasn't adopted. 
It's just a whole other can of wax.